Okay, now let's talk about Atlanta. So this is again like Daytona and uh, Talladega. So you're going to have nobody's going to be a heavy favorite. There you see the odds of the drivers that are near the top. And a couple of trends. Okay, this is interesting because what's cool about Atlanta is, is they've started their whole super speedway deal at the same time the next gen. So that really makes things easy, you know, to go back to how it works trend-wise. And doing that, <laughs> Chevy has been the dominant car. They have won four of the five with the new Speedway and the new next gen. And, and the other thing, which is very important, and that is we have not had Toyota win since 2013. So they don't like to track uh, new Speedway, Next gen or pre next gen, <laughs> pre speed, pre, pre super speedway, they just don't like to track at all. And it's been 14 races that, that they haven't won. And the, the driver that won was actually a driver that is just sitting there in, in, in tied for the tied for the odds, uh, uh, lead, so to speak. Kyle Bush, different. Different car, of course. He's driving a Chevy now, which is a good thing. So he's now in a Chevy, and they've they've been dominating lately. So kind of good thing. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, and to uh, Bush's win came back when Atlanta was just one time each year, all the way back then. So Hamlin won it in 2012. Bush won it in 2013. Ever since then, it's been predominantly Chevrolet and Ford. But like you said, since the next gen car has come out, it's certainly been all Chevrolet, um, which is why I think Kyle Busch um, for the third week in a row, probably even fourth or fifth, uh, should be definitely worthy of being at the top there. Uh, hopefully things go his way. He can get his win and carry on his streak, even though he didn't make it into the playoffs. Well, look, the, the fact is, is if he keeps driving like they've been driving lately, he will. And this is the yep. thing that, again, is a bummer because we just showed you that you just got to get hot at the right time. And Kyle looks like that's exactly what's happening. And it's uh, it's going to be uh, it's going to be good, but it's it'll be good in a way, of course, because if they even if of course they can win a championship, but if they do well in the playoffs, it'll you, it should help them for next season. It should. Team has a lot of rebuilding to do over the winter. Obviously, they got off completely on the wrong foot at the beginning of 2024, and that has cost them. And Bush even said so after Darlington. Uh, he, you know, for missing out in the playoffs and finishing second, coming as close to winning a race and getting his way in over the past couple of weeks as he did, he was remarkably. Um, you know, calm in his comments, just basically saying we were too far behind for too long, and that was too much to overcome. So they got to take this momentum into the offseason, into the winter, figure out what those problems are, and just carry that momentum forward and make sure that they don't bite again in 2025. All right. So out of, let's see, the odds, and these should be pretty close, but let's just talk about these four here. Uh, Blaney just has one win in Atlanta, um, and it hasn't happened with the next gen, but he was second this year, led 31. We know how good he is. He's probably the best right now in these super speedways kyle um has been by, by the way kyle very interesting in his five next gen races he has gotten a better result all five so he's gone from 33rd all the way down to third so he's either going to finish second on sunday based on that trend or he's going to finish first uh, he led 28 laps when he finished third earlier this year he set up nicely <clears throat> the only thing is you're getting 10 to 1 I, you know, you're not going to get 10 to 1 with Kyle Busch in any other race. M you know, maybe a, maybe a road course, it all depends. But he's not at that level yet, even though he's hot, where he's gonna, you're going to get 10 to 1. So that's the only thing is, is you, you, the odds aren't really what, what you'd like to get. And it is like a lucky track. So you might, you know, so, so I wouldn't go all in with the chips on Kyle Busch this week. I, I, I might say just save it for another week where you're not going to have luck involved. 
but he's still a, you know he's still a good play based on uh, how hot he is and all these trends we've just talked about. Logano uh, led 140 laps. That was dominant back in uh, well just last year, and uh, and then the only thing is the last couple of races not so good. Did lead 27 laps though this year, and kislasi has got two wins in his career. Uh, not a good result this year, uh, but he does have a runner-up and a top 10 over his last three. So out of these four right here, who would be your top pick? Uh, it would be a coin flip between Blaney and Bush, to be honest with you. Uh, they finished second and third here in the spring. Honestly, I think I'd give the edge to Bush just because of how well he's raced the past couple of weeks. Uh, but um, we do know that it is very difficult to for a non-playoff driver to win a playoff race. Uh, so Blaney might get the edge there, but in my heart, it says Bush just based on the way that he's been driving recently. Then there's the next group. We go from Elliott and Byron at 12 to 1. Larson, Hamlin, Suarez, and Busher at 14 to 1. You just got to get a kick out of the Larson being 14 to 1 again, still uh, in, a, in a super speedway race. <laughs> just keep doing it. Uh, so it is, it is five races at Atlanta with the next gen with the super speedway. He's crashed four times. Okay, fourteen to one. I can Four see out why. Of the last five, all of the three. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no way to, no way you choose who's Larson this week. No, he's the same odds as Denny Hamlin. Now I know Hamlin has another good <laughs> run at Atlanta, but that's still we know Hamlin is still right up there with Ryan Blaney as one of the best super speedway drivers. So. Um, and, uh, yeah, so look, I'm not taking Hamlin because like I just said, he just, for some reason, he, he hasn't done well here at Atlanta. Um, and, and it is different. Atlanta's not Daytona. Atlanta's not Talladega, but it's still similar. A lot of similarities. Just look at Larson. Uh, Elliot, he's got a win. That was 2022 and he led 96 laps. Byron though. Yes. Byron is the one, uh, and Suarez. Those are the two that I'm looking at. Busher, forget him. I don't even know why he's 14 to 1. Um, look, I know he's pretty decent in the Super Speedways. That's probably why. But he's never done well at Atlanta either. So I'm going Suarez and Byron for sure. Especially Byron. He's got two wins in the next gen. Two wins in the new Super Speedway. And Suarez, first this year. Second in this race last year. So his last two results for Suarez, first and second. He also has another... Top uh, two more top tens and another top five out of five super speedway races here. So Suarez loves Atlanta as far as the super speedway, which is really again unusual because he's is awful at Daytona. So again, it just shows you that they're not all similar these super speedways. But yeah, I think Suarez and Byron are definite picks for me. Yeah, I like those. I might uh, throw Elliot into that grouping as well because he's had some pretty decent success. I, I do think Byron is the the top choice, but this is Elliot's um, Elliot's home track. Uh, he won from pole in 2022. He had two other poles prior to that. Uh, 13th and 15th are the only question marks of his last two races at this track, but both of those uh, came from him starting outside of the top 20 whereas all of his good finishes have come from him starting inside the top 10. So maybe look for where Elliott qualifies this weekend. Byron, definitely the top choice out of that bunch, though. The next uh, group uh, we have, uh, starting with Chastain, and we're going to run them through... Well, let's just do these four. Chastain, Cindric, Reddick, and Bell. Uh, Chastain, runner-up in 2022 in both races. And again, Suarez teammates... But since then, just the seventh this year, still, you know, he with Suarez, you would think that they'd be good. Problem is, like you said, he's not a playoff driver. So if he wasn't going to do well when he's a non-playoff driver, I don't know what he's going to do now. You know, I, I don't know what his mind is. So, yeah, I just can't go with Chastain at this point. It's sort of like Truex right now for me. It's like I just can't take these drivers right now. Um, uh, Chastain's last shot was last week, and, and it just didn't work out. But Sindrick... He's had a pretty good run, and, and he's got excellent Super Speedway teammates. Um, but he's 18-1, to 1, so we got to deal with that. Redick, 
uh, not good. Uh, just one top five out of eight career races. And uh, that did come recently, but his other results in the next gen are pretty bad. And uh, Bell, uh, same thing, just one top five. Uh, that same thing like Reddick came during the next gen, but the other results were bad. So Reddick and Bell really just haven't done all that well here. Sindrick actually has the best resume. Reddick and Bell, you've got to avoid because they're both Toyotas, plus the fact that they have terrible histories here. Uh, Ross Chastain, I agree with you. I'm not sure exactly where he's been uh, recently. This has not been the typical Ross Chastain season that we've come to appreciate the past couple of years. Austin Sindrick is a clear choice among this group. Uh, he's been actually really good uh, at this track. So um, aside from his first two starts uh, in the series at, at Atlanta, if you look at uh, the this the fall race, I should say, of 2022 and beyond, third, 11th, 12th, and fourth, and he's led laps in all four of those races. So Austin Sindrick, the clear choice there of that group. Okay, and by the way, same thing with you talk. You reminded me about Toyota. Same thing with Denny Hamlin. So you want to know a reason why Denny Hamlin isn't done well at yep. Atlanta? There you go. Okay. And then, yeah, let's go with these here. McDowell. The, the, this one, this page speaks for itself. You, you've got three Toyotas. you got to throw them all out. Just because of that, you go with Michael McDowell. <laughs> I got a problem with that. especially it's an since selection here as well. In, in his last two races here, eighth <laughs> and fourth. And he led 27 laps this year. But I tell you what, if I was going to take a true, if I was going to take a, a a a long shot, I mean a Toyota, maybe you go just with the long shot, and you take a stab at Bubba since he was fifth this year, which is his best finish. But yeah, it's still hard for me to do that. So yeah, hundred percent, I yeah. think I agree with you. That's his only his only top only top finish at Atlanta. Um, he prior to that, his best finish at this track was 13th, and that was on the Super Speedway era. So, um, gotten better uh, certainly, but yeah, if you're going to go for a long shot, that's probably the only way I'd take him. Out of these drivers here, Briscoe, Bowman, Dillon, and Gilliland. Look, Bowman, even though he's driving a Chevy, is not done well here. Uh, but you're getting 35 to one, and he is driving a Chevy. So. I might look at Bowman as a long shot. Briscoe's done never done well here. I mean, ever. Dylan, nothing. Gilliland, though, remember, even though he faded late, he led 58 laps this year. Uh, he's never done anything close to that anywhere in the Cup Series. So I might throw a buck on Bowman and Gilliland. I would absolutely throw a dollar on Gilliland. If it, the 58 laps led is great. He qualified fourth that day, and yeah, he faded. Uh, he was really strong. He also qualified inside the top 10 the fall race here last year and finished 16th. Prior to that, he was 15th and 17th. He's only got one, well, besides this, this year where he faded and led the 58 laps, he's only got one finish, really speaking, that he didn't do much at this track. So of that bunch, certainly Todd Gilliland, you got to go with a dollar there. And then the rest here, you got Stenhouse, Jones, Barry, and Burton. Uh, Stenhouse was sixth earlier this year, so that's not a surprise knowing him on the super speedway. So you always have to consider Stenhouse as a long shot. He's a guy you might want to throw a buck at. Jones has been okay uh, overall here. Uh, nothing from Barry or Burton. LaJoy, though, absolutely throw a buck on LaJoy at least. He's been solid here. He has a couple top fives with the next gen on the super speedway. Um, and, and to tell you the truth, th that would be it for me. Uh, out, of, out of the rest of these guys, I wouldn't go with anyone here on the list. So what about you? What about all these other long shots? Well, yeah, I think Corey LaJoy, you already named him. Uh, he's coming off. He's, he's been good at this track, but he's also coming off another really good finish. He finished ninth last week at Darlington. So, you know, LaJoy finds a way to the end of the super speedway races. He's been pretty good at Atlanta as well. So despite the fact that they're different, he's just got that style of drive. Uh, so Corey LaJoy for me is the best of that bunch. And I probably wouldn't actually go with anybody else because looking at Gregson or, or maybe... <clears throat> um, Barry or some of the other ones that you've got out there, they just have nothing to speak of uh, at Super Speedway Atlanta, so avoid them. 
All right, so there you go. It's time for picks. What you gonna do? Oh man, uh, top choice. Um, let's go with. I'm. I hesitate, um, but I'm gonna go with Kyle Bush as my top choice. I uh, was thinking about him and potentially Blaney. But I just like Bush's. I, I like his trajectory right now. He's, he's just driving as as good as he's been all season. So I'm going to ride it while it's still going. Uh, Sindrick will be, he was mid pack, right? Yep. He he's 18. Little, yeah. So I'll take Sindrick as my mid pack. And then for my long shot, um, the joy. Yeah. I'll go the joy. All right. I'm going to go Byron, uh, beating out Suarez. You took Sindrick. So, I'll take Bowman <clears throat> and why not? I'll take Gilliland. Excellent we, choice. We did talk about, uh, we had that question earlier this year about whether our viewers thought that Gilliland or McDowell would win. So maybe this would be a really good race to take them both. I, I agree with that. Yep, I, do, I still think it can happen. We still got Talladega yet to come, too, so could be good for them. Okay, so uh, again, the playoffs continue next week with the road course at Watkins Glen. And who won earlier this year at Watkins? I mean, uh, who won somebody? Does anybody, uh, I, don't, I don't think anybody has like any sort of great run this year on the road courses, do they? No, uh, it's been pretty pretty i don't want to say predictable but it's your typical road course people you know tyler reddick uh christopher bell up there um truex throwing it away <laughs> often so yeah no no real trends there to speak of um I, I think bell and reddick probably when we get to a road course are going to end up being the favorites though when we come to watkins Glen. 